this little cheeky one is Jake Gyllenhaal has obviously been doing the press tour for Roadhouse at the moment. And his Batman audition was brought up for Batman Begins. He did do a screen test for that film. Um, it come out, he said it was pretty cool that Christopher Nolan had like rang him up personally to say that he hadn't got the role. But um, yeah, he was getting interviewed recently and he said that it would be an honour to play the character still. This is like 20 years after the fact. Um, but I just thought it was quite interesting. Um, it goes on to say, um, Jake Gyllenhaal was a serious contender to play Bruce Wayne in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. But it appears losing the role to Christian Bale never impacted Gyllenhaal's desire to play Batman on the big screen. Making the press rounds in support of his new Prime Video action movie, Roadhouse, Gyllenhaal was asked by Screen Rant, Screen Rant if he was still interested in playing the Batman. Oh man, that's a classic role. It's an honour. Um, and he goes on to speak about other roles and stuff like that. But I just thought it was quite interesting. I just wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on possibly Jake Gyllenhaal playing Batman. Now, like we obviously know that the DCU is ramping up with James Gunn and He's got Andy Muschietti, who's directing The Brave and the Bold, which is the new Batman-orientated film for that universe. You know, like, could we see Jake Gyllenhaal in the role? Um, for me personally, like, maybe, maybe. I'd have to be convinced a little bit. It's, it's the voice that sort of, like, I don't know whether I could see that voice under a cowl, but that's just me. He is an awesome actor, and, you know... Christian Bale, he changed his voice dramatically when he was under the cowl to the point where I think it's almost like you go and watch it back now and it's a bit like, I don't know whether this was the best choice in the world. But anyway, a lot of growling. <laughs> but, um... I've always, always disagreed with that. I've always liked his voice. I've never understood the hatred. Never. I've, I've always been the outsider on that on that regard there. Well, he, to be fair, Badger, he's, he's, he's doing something like pretty unique with his voice there. So coming from someone who is a voice actor, I imagine that does sort of tickle your taste buds. But mate, Jake Gyllenhaal as, you know, a potential new Batman contender, he's still interested in the role. I imagine there's a little bit in the back of his brain that's like, yeah, man, I wouldn't mind playing, you know, Bruce Wayne. I think it's like for most male actors out there who don't mind getting into the superhero genre, a role that they'd want to play. But Badger, Jake Gyllenhaal, Batman, can you see it? Yeah, I can. But then again, I don't think it's saying too much because I can picture pretty much almost anyone uh, in, the, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal's uh, lane playing as him. Um, anyone in in that caliber of actors, you know, name them. You know what I mean? Uh, Brad Cooper, I think that's his name, right? Brad Cooper. Yeah, he wanted yeah, to yeah. do it, and um, he wanted to do it. I can easily imagine him. I can also imagine that guy who's playing as Jack Reacher currently playing as him. Um, pretty much anyone like in that in that lane, I really can't imagine it. Um, yeah, I, I'm not too fussed about the whole voice thing. Um, it's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, as I said, I really liked Christian Bell's interpretation of what he did. Um, I could have played as Batman, up, by the way, <laughs> by um, our I guy. Mean, video. No, no, what I mean, voicing, I don't mean me. <laughs> Can you imagine me playing for that? Batman, is that what you're getting in shape for, Badger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine that Batman getting out of breath after two punches. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> Now, our guy, Video Tasties, uh, did uh, want to hire me to do a little fan uh, audiobook, and he wanted me to do it, but I just didn't have the time for it. He wanted me to play as Batman. I was like, you know what? Pretty dope. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I would have done something along the lines of uh, Christian Bell's shit, because I loved it. I loved Christian Bell's voice. So, um, yeah, I would have done something like that. So if if another actor comes along and does something, I know we're an hockey pants or something along the lines. <laughs> I would have rated it. I'd, I'd rate it, so it's cool. Um, my favorite interpretation of Batman definitely is the Batman. I'm still shocked uh, by how much I got on board with that film, not being a Batman fan myself. I'm just blown away by how much that was up my street. And what Robert Patterson did with that blew me away. That whole whispering thing he did with his voice. I was like, this is it, man. And I owe that film a lot because I finally, after 30 years, discovered what it's like to be a fan of Batman. I'm no longer on the outside, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so um something along those lines we'll see but if i'm honest with you and i'll end it with this real quick what i want to see far more in a batman film 
It's not an actor doing an amazing job of Batman. That's not my real focus. I just want a great film, mate. I just want another film that makes me go, God, yeah, I'm on board with Batman. Finally, I get it now. It's not just one film. It's multiple ones. Give me some of this. So we'll see, mate. We'll see. But Jake Gyllenhaal, why not? Yeah, man. Andy, Jake Gyllenhaal, Batman, can you see it? Is this a good choice? I can absolutely see it. I'm not going to labour on it too long. I don't have much to say about it. I think he's he looks the part. He's a good actor. I think for for Batman, it's important to have a kind of the dark side. It's important that they can play play him almost as an anti-hero. I suppose he, he is to an extent. So I think like Dylan Hall's performance in like Nick uh, Nick Collins. Yeah, Nick, Nick Collins, and even going back to like Donnie Darko, he has that kind of like. Edginess, he can bring that edge, that slightly kind of tortured side to a character, which is important for somebody like Batman, who ultimately is slightly psychotic. <laughs> End of the Absolutely. day, he's jumping about, dressed as a, he's a billionaire, jumping about, dressed as a, as a bat. So yeah, I think he's, he's, he's matured into it. I think, like, I appreciate why he was in the running back for the Dark Knight trilogy, yeah. but I think he's probably aged nicely. Now that he'd be, he's more of a contender for it now than he probably was 20 years ago. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think the voice is a big issue. I think there's different ways to do it. You don't have to go. I think it's important to have that duality, like the way Kevin Conroy, Kevin Conroy does it very subtly mm-hmm. uh, with a kind of rhythm of speech, brings it down octane and stuff. Bale went to extremes, like Badger had said. Uh, Patterson does a kind of whispery thing. He doesn't, he, he basically says by any little as. Bruce Wayne, which then helps because you've nothing to compare it to uh, the way his film panned out, and he's got that kind of whispery, understated, uh, which which can be unsettling in, a, in another way. So I think there's different ways to do it. I don't I don't think he has to have you know a badger level voice, or it has to be an actor that can that can bring that gravity. <laughs> I think. <It's> just... <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I really like what Bill did as well. I think it just I think it was a slow thing. Like I think. It, it became, it gets parodied to death, but it didn't happen instantly. No, no. Think. It kind of happened over the years, and, to, and then, you know, people ran with it and made a lot of sketches and stuff. Yeah. No, I, I think John Holt is, is, is an obvious choice. I'd be quite happy with that. <laughs>